Hello again, and welcome to another Sunday School Lesson Review Broadcast for Sunday, November the 26th, 2023. The Lesson Review is taken from 2 Chronicles, the 36th chapter, verses 15 through 21, and Psalms, the 137th Psalm, verses 1 through 6. The title of the lesson is Judgment and Exile. I am your host for the lesson, Minister William Gadsden. I greet you in the exalted name of Jesus Christ. Because it is Jesus that enables us to get the word of God out to you, the listening public. We originate from the Greater Peace Missionary Baptist Church, located in the Colleen, Fort Cavazos, Texas area. Our address is 4201 Zephyr Road, Colleen, Texas, 76543. And you can reach us by telephone if you wish or desire at area code 254-680-4378. But if you prefer to reach us online... Our website is www.greaterpeace.com. You can also communicate with us by email. Our email address is greaterpeacembc at peoplepc.com. Now, we at Greater Peace provide a variety of services for your Christian growth. A complete schedule of services and activities can be viewed on our website. So please join us in extending God's kingdom here on earth. I am your host, for the lesson, Minister William Gadsden, and I thank God for you supporting this ministry. Now let us pray, give, uh, offer prayer before beginning our Sunday School lesson. Heavenly Father, again, as we begin this lesson, another lesson about you and how you react with your people and how we, as your subjects today, understand should understand that you are a mighty God, you're an awesome God, and you're a supreme God, and we ought to give you the service that you so richly deserve. I thank you for those that are listening, those that are participating in this lesson. Continue to help it to grow, if it be thy will, Lord. I thank you for the, everything that you've done with me as I've gone through these lessons over the years, and I pray that they will continue, and I pray that your word will grow as a result of these lessons, not because I am giving the lessons, but because you are there. The Holy Spirit is guiding me, and as the Holy Spirit, as you have got directed the Holy Spirit to guide me. I thank you and I praise you and a special blessing about those that are listening in. If it be thy will, I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, for my introduction to judgment and exile, as you, if you remember or recall from last Sunday's lesson, I stated that Israel as a nation divided into the northern and southern kingdoms in 930 B.C., the northern kingdom was conquered by the Assyrians in 722 B.C. They went into exile. And the southern kingdom, Judah, conquered. They were conquered by the Babylonians in 586 B.C. This was 136 years later after uh, the Assyrians captured uh, the northern kingdom. Now, during this time, there were battles between the Assyrians and the Babylonians for control of the area surrounding the land of Israel. During, this, during the time of this lesson, the northern kingdom had been defeated, and now because of their rebellion against God, the southern kingdom, Judah, was caught up in a war between Assyria and Babylonia, and ba the Assyrians and Babylonians. During this time, there were on and off battles between the Assyrians and the Babylonians. The Assyrians was on the decline, and Egypt was aligned with the Assyrians to defeat Babylon. Babylon was... Sent uh, had sent envoys in the past. Babylon had sent envoys to Jerusalem during the reign of King Hezekiah, and when they came, they came to basically congratulate Hezekiah on his recovery from his sickness. That God had recovered him from his sickness, and as a result, Hezekiah basically showed him all the treasures of the of, of the city itself, the treasures of the city, the treasures of the, the temple. And nothing was basically deprived of them of all the things that they had. Hezekiah showed them all. Now, Jeremiah, not Jeremiah, but Isaiah chastised Hezekiah for doing this and said that they would pay for this later. And they did. Now, during, as I said, King Necho of, uh, of Egypt was marching to help the Assyrians fight the Babylonians because, as I said, there was always this association uh, the the Syrians were on the decline, and the Babylonians were basically, uh, basically becoming the power of the area. 
And Egypt was also a power, but they didn't want to be servants to the Babylonians, so they aligned themselves with the Assyrians. Now, King Josiah of Israel attempted to stop Necho from uh, aiding the Assyrians. King Necho was aligned with the Assyrians, and they were in trouble. And so he was sending an army to help the, the Assyrians. But the possible alliance between Babylon and Judah, uh, we said that, I said earlier that there was an alliance between Judah and uh, Babylon. And so this alliance basically probably provoked uh, Josiah to attempt to stop Necho. I don't know if there was a communication between him and the Babylonians or not, but he attempted to stop King Necho of Egypt from basically going to assist the Assyrians. So Necho was uh, was not attacking the was not attacking Judah, but was traveling as fast as he could to aid the Assyrians, who were in desperate need of help. However, Josiah was attempting to stop Necho, as I said, from his mission. Necho sent messengers to Josiah as follows from Second Chronicles 35th chapter, verse 20 through 22. And, and this is from the NIV version. It says, Necho, king of Egypt, went up to fight at Carchemish on the Euphrates, and Josiah marched out uh, to meet him in battle. But Necho sent messengers to him, saying, What quarrel is there, king of Judah, between you and me? It is not you I am attacking at this time, but the house with which I am at war. God has told me to hurry, so stop opposing God, who is with me, or he will destroy you. Josiah, however, would not turn away from him, but disguised himself to engage in battle, and he would not listen to what Necho had said at God's command, but went to fight him on the plains of Megiddo. Now, People say, well, why was God speaking to the king of Egypt? We don't know how he spoke to him. Maybe a prophet told him. Maybe he threw, saw it through a dream. But the Bible clearly says that God had spoken to him, and he is sticking to Josiah, who was a good king, saying, don't stop me. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not at war with you. God has said, leave me alone, and I, that's what you should do. Josiah's attempt to stop Egyptian support for Assyria failed. And Egypt's attempt to aid the Assyrian's army failed also, leading to the end of the Assyrian Empire in 609 BC. So Sennacherib and that Rabshakeh that basically came to Jerusalem to taunt the, the people of Jerusalem basically was no more. So after Judah's defeat against the Egyptians, Necho took control of Judah and required that they pay tribute to Egypt and Egypt also placed their choice of king uh, on the Judean throne. So the king of, Egypt, of Judah basically was determined by Egypt. Now the last three kings of Judah were placed on their thrones by either Egypt or Babylon. Judah's kings placed there, placed there by Egypt rebelled against Nebuchadnezzar, which resulted in Nebuchadnezzar's army, Nebuchadnezzar's army besieging the city on various occasions. But finally, in 586 B.C., for 18 months, a Babylonian king basically finally destroyed the city and its people in the, com in the following way. He said the Jerusalem's walls were broken down and, pa and palaces were set on fire. And worst of all, they burned and destroyed the house of, of God, the temple that uh, Solomon built. All the vessels of the temple were taken and taken to and basically to Babylon and placed in their temple. Uh, not only the, the, that, uh, the vessels that they had in the temple, but all the vessels, on, all of the treasures of Jerusalem that Hezekiah had showed the envoy from Babylon were taken because they knew where they were. Then the people were not spared either. The soldiers killed the young men. They had to no compassion for the young men or maidens. The old were not at no exception either. They were killed. Now, these things were done to Judah because of centuries, for centuries, God used prophets such as Isaiah and Jeremiah to warn Israel of what would happen to them 
unless they repent it for their evil ways, serving idol gods, and not obeying God and the commands of God. Now these words from the prophets were coming true. Now this is the end of my introduction. Let's get into our Sunday School lesson. And it's titled, The Judgment and Exile. It's titled, Judgment and Exile. The lesson text is taken from Second Chronicles, the 36th chapter, verses 15 through 21, and Psalm 1, uh, Psalm 37, that is, verses 1 through 6. The golden text is Psalms 137, 1, and it reads, By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down, yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. The lesson outlines, there are three of them, compassion, taken from 2 Chronicles, the 36th chapter, verses 15 through 16, conquest, 2 Chronicles, 17, uh, 36th chapter, verses 17 through 21, and complaint, Psalms 137, 1 through 6, verses 1 through 6. So with that in mind and that all of that information, let's go ahead and start with, started with compassion. The first outline, verses 15 through 16 of the 36th chapter of Second Chronicles. Verse 15 reads, And the Lord God of their fathers sent to them by his messenger, raising up betides and sending because he had compassion for his people and on his dwelling place. God had sent prophets and messengers to Israel, telling them that he was the God of their forefathers who served him, and now they, the descendants of their forefathers, have decided not to serve him. Despite all of the things that he has done for them, bringing them to the promised land and giving the promised land to them. Now, not wanting to send immediate doom to Israel, God sent his messengers telling Israel that their failure to end their rebellion against his commands would result in devastation for the nation and them. God sent these warnings to the people because he had compassion for them as a people and as a nation. Verse 16 reads, But they mocked the messengers of God and despised his words and misused his prophets until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people, till there was no remedy. You see, the rich in Judah were enjoying prosperous times, and they were doing so at the expense of the poor because they had taken the land from the poor, put them in servitude, and had them basically work for them for free. Then by and they reason basically since they were doing so good, they reason that God allowed them to be so prosperous, and He would not that is God would not punish them for doing this. So when the prophets of God spoke to them of God's displeasure with them, they ignored the prophets' words. In fact, they despised the messages of the prophets and misused and abused God's prophets. Finally. After centuries of not listening to the message, God gave the prophets. The wrath of the Lord turned against the people, and there was no stopping his wrath at this point. So now we get to the point, the second section is conquest. Second Chronicles, the 17th chapter, 26, Second Chronicles, uh, 36th chapter, verses 17 through 21. And seven, verse 17 reads, Therefore he brought upon them the king of the Chaldees, who slew their young men, with the sword in the house of their sanctuaries, and had no compassion upon young man or maiden, old man or him that stooped, stooped for age. He gave them all into his hand. So the beginning of God's wrath against Judah began when the Chaldeans or Chaldees, Chaldees or Chaldeans, who were a collection, the Chaldeans that in fact were a collection of countries that recognized Babylon as their capital. And thus they were considered as a part of the Babylonian Empire. And uh, they were used by God to punish Judah for their basically idol worship and not obeying his commands. The Chaldeans or Babylonians breached Ju Jerusalem's wall after 18 months and began to kill residents of Jer Jerusalem with no compassion for man, maiden, regardless of their age. And verse 18 reads, And all the vessels of the house of God, great and small, and the treasures of the house of the Lord, and the treasures of the king, and of his princes, all of these brought he brought to Babylon. So when Hezekiah received the envoy from Babylon before prior to this time, he showed them all the treasures of the temple and the kingdom, and sent them to Hezekiah, and, and the envoy sent to Hezekiah, 
Now, let me back up now. Hezekiah received the envoy from Babylon, and they said they came to see Hezekiah because he was been sick, and now he is recovered, and they came basically bearing gifts, basically uh, honoring him for being able to recover from his sickness. So they, when Hezekiah showed them all the treasures of the city, the kingdom, and everything, the temple, they knew where all of the treasures were when they defeated the city, so that's where they went to get the treasures of the city of Jerusalem. Now, well, so when this information, so given this information, when they went to, to the places where the treasures were when they took the city. Now, Jeremiah, not Jeremiah, Isaiah had chastised Hezekiah for showing them where the treasures were and all of the treasures that were available in the city and the temple. So given this information, uh, this, when the treasure, when they went, the envoy went back, they gave this information to the Babylonians. And so when the Babylonians came, they already knew where all the treasures were. And so they took the treasures. And verse 18, 19 says, And they burnt the house of God and break down the walls of Jerusalem and burnt all the palaces thereof with fire and destroyed all the goodly vessels thereof. So after taking the treasures of the city and temple, they tore down the walls of Jerusalem and burn all the palaces within the city. And verse 20 says, And then, and them that had escaped from the sword carried he away to Babylon, where they were servants to him and his sons until the reign of, king, of the kingdom of Persia. Now all the people that were left after the initial murder of the men and women became servants to the Babylonian king and his sons until the kingdom was captured by the Persians years later. Now, Verse 21 says, To fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah until the land had enjoyed her Sabbath for a long, Sabbath, plural Sabbath that is, for as long as they lay desolate, she kept Sabbath to fulfill threescore and ten years. Now all of these things that the Lord told Jeremiah to tell the people were now coming to fruition. And God now addresses an issue that Israel had disobeyed for 490 years in the land. God told Israel to plant crops and cultivate their vineyards for six years. And on the seventh year, they were not to plant any crops or gather any grapes that grew wild on the, in the vineyards. Israel had failed to do this during the 490 years. And now God set the time for Israel's captivity in years in terms of by basically he set them their time for captivity in Babylon according to the, the Sabbaths that they had missed. In other words, Israel had ignored 70 Sabbath years, and now God is imposing 70 years of servitude on Judah so the land in Israel can be rested and uh, basically in observance of the Sabbath of the land. In other words, God had told them every seventh year, don't plan anything. But they had ignored that. So now God is basically saying, because you've done this, this is your term that you're going to be in servitude in, in uh, Babylon. Israel had ignored the 70 Sabbath years, and now God is imposing 70 years of servitude for Judah so the land in Israel can be rested by sending the last group of Israel into captivity for 70 years. So that was uh, basically, when you look at it, that was... Uh, uh, the conquest, the conquest of the land and why God basically chose to basically give the land over to the Chaldeans or the Babylonians and how long they were going to be there was determined by what they had not done while they were in the land. And that is obey the seventh year, the Sabbath year, by not planting crops or gathering any grapes during that time. So now we get to uh, complaints, Psalms 137, verses 1 through 6. Verses 1 to 2 read, the, now bear in mind, this is when they have been deported to Babylon. And so, by the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. The people that were deported to Babylon were quartered in an area of the rivers of Babylon. They were a defeated people, and as they settled into their new home, they cried for what had been done to Jerusalem when they remembered what life was before the invasion of Babylon 
and the condition of the temple and the city after the destruction by Babylon, by its destruction by Babylon. But they probably did not attribute their state of existence to their disobedience of God. They were worrying about the city and they were basically crying about it, but they probably did not recognize that this all came about because of their disobedience. Some of them probably did, but not all. Do we blame ourselves nowadays when catastrophes come to us? Do we say, well, we sinned against the Lord and, 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 and that is the result of what God is doing for us? We don't recognize that many times, but this is what the people, children of Israel were doing. They probably did not attribute their state of existence to their disobedience to God, just as we do today. As many of us do today, that is. They did not want to sing songs or play music upon their instruments as they did when they were in Jerusalem. So they just hung their instruments on the willow trees in the area. And verses 4 and 5 read, For there they carried us away captive, required of us a song, and they wasted us, they that wasted us required of us mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. And then verse 4 says, How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? The captives of Judah were in the same situation they were when God delivered them from Egypt. However, now they were placed back in bondage and isolated from the main population of ba Babylon. They were not allowed them to go into the main areas of Babylon. They put them over there by the rivers so they wouldn't basically uh, maybe pollute the population. Now, it is said that it a mind is a terrible thing to waste, but the mind can be a terrible thing not to let one forget about the past and how they enjoyed luxuries while they're free, while free in the land. We don't want to think about the terrible things in life. We think about the good things in our life. But they, they are, so many times the terrible things that we did in our life are the result of us basically worrying about our, uh, not enjoying our luxuries today. Israel had remembered Jerusalem, how beautiful it was and how wasted it looked when they, the city was destroyed. This mindful memory caused them to cry and loan for past glory. The captors asked the people to sing the joyful songs they sang while in their land. They probably did sing such songs, but there was no joy in singing these songs. Verses 5 and 6 says, If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand Forget her cunning. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. You see, the people did not want to forget Jerusalem, but many of them were old when they were placed into captivity, and many would die in the land and never see Jerusalem again. They said if they would always, they would always think of Jerusalem with joy, and if they didn't do that, let the tongues of their mouths cleave the, the tongue cleaved to the roof of their mouth so that they could could not speak but their memories would fail them as servants of the king of babylon because they were now servants and they would be servants until 70 years had expired and after those 70 years babylon ceased to exist and persia basically took over the babylonian empire without even a fight if you recall it, Belshazzar basically was having a, a party with all of his king, his princes and and everyone, and then he was drinking, and then he decided. Remember those the the cups and everything that they took from the temple in Jerusalem. He said, "Go get some of those cups so we can enjoy them." They were in the temple of uh, Babylonian temple, so they went and got the cups. And we know from the history from the scripture it says that. When they drank from them, Belshazzar saw handwriting on the wall. And in no hand, he's basically just reading it, what it said. And it says his knees knocked on him and he failed. And basically, he didn't know what to do. And uh, this handwriting on the wall basically said that he had been weighed in the balance. And his, basically, this, basically his sins against the Lord was going to take away his land. And that very night, the Persians sneaked in through a, a way, a, a, a tunnel under the city and basically took over the city without even a battle. This is the lesson uh, for this Sunday. I hope something has been said that will help you in understanding this lesson.
And so this is, as I said, the essence of the Sunday School lesson for this week as I see it. Now let us close in prayer. Lord, I thank you. I praise you. And I thank you for this lesson. I thank you for going with me this lesson. And please, Lord, help us to always understand that your way is your way. You are an awesome God. And basically, you do things that no one else can do. And uh, these are the things that you did. To the children of Israel, not because you dis were displeased, not because you disliked them, but because they disliked you and did not obey you, and you gave them centuries to repent, but they never did. So this is what the situation was, and this is the lesson for this Sunday. Let us close in prayer. Lord, I thank you. I praise you. A blessing I pray for those that are listening, and I thank you for being with me, Holy Spirit, guiding me through this lesson. Continue to go with those that are listening and go with me myself so that we can further our understanding of you and your ways. These things I pray and I ask in the name of Jesus. Amen.